untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. The footage you're about to see was recorded during the early access event for March of the Machine, so thanks to Wizards for providing me with a fully unlocked account to preview the new set. And today's deck was voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's a Junt Battles deck featuring the new card type, and there's a ton of battles throughout the deck, so you're definitely going to get to see those in action today, starting with Invasion of Tarkir, a 2-mana battle. When it enters a battlefield in this deck, it's just going to deal 2 damage to any other target since we don't have any dragons to reveal otherwise we could deal even more damage this one enters the battlefield with five defense counters on it as you can see in the bottom right corner and the opponent will be assigned to protect the invasion of Tarkir and then it sort of functions like a planeswalker with loyalty counters but now defense counters instead so we can attack it with our creatures to reduce the number of defense counters on it once we remove the last counter we can transform it into defiant thunder maw a 4-4 dragon with flying and trample and whenever a dragon we control attacks it deals 2 damage to any target, so a very powerful card if we can get it online. Then we're also playing two copies of Invasion of Ixalan, which has four defense counters. When it enters, it's kind of like a cantrip. We get to look at the top five cards of our library, reveal a permanent card from among them, and put it into our hand. So this can find our lands, as well as our creatures and our battles. We've got some enchantments in the deck as well, so it gives us a ton of great card selection. And then once transformed, turns into the Belligerent Regisaur of 4-3 Trampler, saying whenever we cast a spell, it gains indestructible until end of turn. And then there's the Invasion of Ergamon, a 5 defense counter battle. When it enters, we can create a treasure token, and then we may discard a card if we do draw a card. And once transformed, we get the Cliff Charger, a 3-4 trampling rhino, saying when it enters the battlefield, we may discard a card. If we do, search our library for a land or battle card, reveal it, and put it into our hand. So it gives us a nice tutor effect in the late game to potentially get some of our powerful one-off battles, like maybe our Invasion of Chandelar, which can return up to 3 target permanent cards from our graveyard to our hand when it enters and once transformed gives us an enchantment saying at the beginning of our upkeep we may put a permanent card from our hand onto the battlefield so that can also save us a lot of mana then I've also got a one-off five-color Invasion of Alara, which has seven defense counters, so this one's pretty tricky to transform. But when it enters a battlefield, it's kind of like getting to double cascade, so we reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal a card with mana value four or less that's not a land. And then one of those we can cast for free, the other one we can put into our hand. And then once transformed, we get a powerful five-color sorcery, saying target player draws two cards, we may put an artifact card from our hand onto the battlefield, we can create a token that's a copy of a permanent we control, distribute 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and then we can also destroy target permanent and opponent controls, including their lands if we want to, so I'm excited to cast Awaken the Maelstrom at some point. And then we've got some removal at 4 mana in battle form as well, with Invasion of Innistrad, which we can play at instant speed, giving a creature minus 30, minus 13 until end of turn. And once transformed, we get an enchantment, the Deluge of the Dead, that when it enters makes a pair of 2-2 black zombie creature tokens, and then also functions as graveyard hate, potentially exiling creatures from a graveyard to make additional zombie tokens. And then our final battle is Invasion of Fiora at 6 mana, a powerful sweeper where we can choose one or both between destroying all legendary creatures and destroying all non-legendary creatures. So there may be a board state where we don't want to destroy any of our creatures, but we still want to play Invasion of Fiora so we can transform it into the Resolute Monarch, in which case we can simply decide to destroy all legendary creatures since we don't have any of those ourselves. So that's a nice workaround, but of course we always have the option of wiping the entire board. And then the Resolute Monarch, a 3-6 with Menace and Death Touch, and when it attacks, remove all counters from up to one target permanent. So that's a very easy way to transform our author battles into their backsides. And then at the beginning of our upkeep, if we haven't been dealt combat damage since our last turn, we draw a card and lose one life, so this can be a great source of card advantage. And then looking at the rest of our deck, we've got some interesting ways of transforming our battles without needing to attack them. And those include Render Inert, a 3-mana sorcery, saying we can remove up to 5 counters from target permanent, and we draw a card. So we can simply target a battle, remove 5 defense counters from it, and in most circumstances that will be enough to transform it. So this one will be very useful and can transform some of our 2-mana battles as early as turn 3, which can be quite powerful. 
Then we also have four copies of Cemetery Desecrator, a six mana zombie with menace 4 4. When it enters the battlefield or dies, exile another card from a graveyard. When we do, we get to either remove X counters from target permanent where X is the mana value of the exiled card, or we can give a creature minus X minus X until end of turn where X is that same mana value. So the Desecrator can take out an opposing creature when it enters, or we can use it to remove defense counters from our battles to help transform them. And then Desecrator also synergizes very nicely with our Reflection of Kiki Jiki once we get to the final chapter of our Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which can also be a nice way to generate treasures and get ahead on mana thanks to the Goblin Shaman token, giving us a bit of card selection on Chapter 2. But more importantly, Reflection, getting to copy our Cemetery Desecrator can be very powerful, as not only do we get to enter the battlefield ability from Desecrator again, but end of turn when we have to sacrifice it, it dies, giving us another one of those triggers, so that can help transform multiple battles in the same turn. And then we also have four copies of Big Score as another way of ramping into our Desecrator ahead of schedule. Have to discard a card, we get to draw two and make two treasure tokens. So between our Fable, Big Score and Invasion of Argamon, we've got a ton of ways to make treasure tokens to help ramp and fix our mana, to potentially hard cast our Invasion of Alara as well, which can come in handy. And then we also have four copies of Voltage Surge as another cheap removal spell, which can deal two damage to a creature or planeswalker. If we sacrifice an artifact, we can deal four damage instead. So the treasure tokens can also help enable Voltage Surge. Now, sadly, this one specifically says creature or planeswalker, so we cannot target our battles with Voltage Surge, but other burn spells like Invasion of Tarkir can target anything, including battles, to help transform those as well. And then our mana base, pretty straightforward. We've got the Proving Ground as a nice try land plenty of dual lands, including some fast lands to play early, and then the Innistrad duels to play later in the game. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little slow to get going, but render inert, good synergy with our battles here, so we can transform them right away. And we'll be able to take out Skralv with our Voltage Surge next turn. It's your opponent's green-white. Can play Copper Line Gorge, play our Invasion of Tarkir now. And then next turn we could already make a Thunder Maw with our Render Inert. Which could be quite good against a smaller creature deck. Ooh, Glissa Sunslayer. Also pretty good alongside battles. But uh, how do we want to deal with it? Could just make our Thunder Maw. Could Invasion of Tarkir plus Voltage Surge on Glissa. That might be the safer play. So it doesn't go unchecked. Okay. Another option was playing Invasion of Ergamon, and then with a treasure we could deal 4 to Glissa. Okay, Thalia's can make things a little more expensive, but can still get our dragon here and draw a card. So my guess is our opponent's playing an Amazon Legends deck with Thalia and the Gitrog monster as one of the payoff cards. Thalia attacks. They might have an Iganjo, in which case we'll still be able to take out Thalia if we wait and attack. Yeah, that seems fine. Yep, that happens. And then we could make another dragon here if we want. Okay, pass it back. Can potentially discard a land to Invasion of Ergamon. Jadar is just going to die to our Thunder Maw. Possible they have another Iganjo if they can channel. So, step one, Argamon. Discard Proving Ground. Okay. And then... I think I should still take out Jadar. Assuming they have another Iganjo here. They want Jadar getting out of hand. And then I can hang on to Copper Line Gorge to discard to the second chapter. Ok, 
Okay, Desecrator's nice. What's the most expensive card we can exile? Mana value 3. So if the Shaman connects, we can transform it. Could also remove counters from our Fable, but doesn't seem necessary. Okay, what battle do we want to get? Could go for Invasion of Alara, have the mana to cast it, thanks to our treasures. Could be fun. Okay, there's Thali on the Gitrog. For four first strike and death touch. So not that easy to attack past. But let's spin the wheel. And we can cast one of these for free. Let's say Invasion of Ixalan. And then Invasion of Innistrad, a great answer to the opponent's creature here. I guess our land does come into play tapped, although we can still cast Invasion of Innistrad thanks to the treasure. Just making sure treasure doesn't come into play tapped. And then we can finish off our battle, and this can go face. There we go. Perfect answer. And Invasion of Alara. So we get to draw two. Can destroy their land. And then we can copy our Cemetery Desecrator and distribute some plus one counters. Something like this. Not bad. Trigger Desecrator again. Thali and Gidrog exiled to remove some more counters. Well, this was awesome. Definitely got to see our battles in action. Opponent gives us a GG since they're pretty much dead on board. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand doesn't have any battles yet, but it's got potential. Just need to find a third line for Fable and then we'll be on our way. There we go. So, probably okay to play a tapped Haunted Ridge. Smoldering Egg. Okay, so we could double Voltage Surge to take it out. Yeah, we could go for it now. Could also render Inert to remove some counters from it eventually. Yeah, I guess we'll hang on to Voltage Surge, just play Fable here. And then if we manage to make a treasure token, we can maybe just play a single Voltage Surge on the egg. Okay, Invasion of Tarkir to kill our Shaman. So let's get rid of Urgamon and maybe one Voltage Surge. Okay, we could big score to set up our Cemetery Desecrator, which I kind of like here. Even though we're missing a battle on the battlefield, could also decide to Innistrad the Smoldering Egg. And then we'll have our first battle in play. Another Invasion of Tarkir. Okay. Put maybe going for Dragon Synergies, although the battles don't synergize too well with the Smoldering Egg. So they reveal the dragon, so they could deal three to their author invasion. And now we know about Shivan Devastator. Okay, let's big score. Discarding probably Fable. Even though it would be nice to eventually combine with a Desecrator. Okay, so now we have Plenty of treasures to sack to a Voltage Surge if needed. 
and I think we set up our invasion of Innistrad, and then next turn play Desecrator. Could also invasion and then transform it with Render Inert, but that might be overextending into a Sweeper. Alright, Volcanic Spite to finish off the battle. So now we're probably going to want to take out their Dragon with Invasion of Innistrad. Four four flyer, if it attacks, can deal two damage, so we'd be able to finish off our reflection, which we're gonna wanna avoid. And then we'll voltage surge, finish off the devastator as well. Okay, so we have quite a few options now including playing our Cemetery Desecrator, could render inert on Invasion of Innistrad, taking a look at the mana values in the graveyard. So there's a big score which would remove four counters, and then of course we can also copy our Desecrator with Reflection. So maybe we want to finish off the Smoldering Egg first. So big score, kill Smoldering Egg. And then copy Desecrator to finish off the battle. And then now we can get rid of one of the opponent's cards as well if we'd like. Could just attack the battle or could finish it off by exiling my own Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And then this can go face. There we go. Get our zombies. And then we're just waiting for more battles between Render Inert and the Desecrator plus Reflection combo. Into the fire to wipe our board, dealing two to our creatures and battles. So pretty good with the invasion as well. I guess with our Deluge of the Dead, we want to try and keep creatures in the opponent's graveyard so we can make more zombies. Okay. The Desecrator's ability is not optional, but we don't have to target the opponent's invasion. Okay, so what's next here? We can make a couple zombies, maybe start by cycling Proving Ground. Could have also channeled Abandoned Mire, but let's keep digging. Invasion of Ixalan's nice. Finding Fable vs. Invasion of Ergamon. I think we go for Ergamon. Ooh, opponent with a Devastator off the top to transform Invasion of Tarkir, so we could still be in trouble here. Opponent's got two dragons. Found our own invasion of Tarkir. So Render Inert can transform our invasion of Ixalan, although the dinosaur is not going to help against our dragons. Could also Render Inert a Sheevan Devastator to essentially kill it. That seems pretty decent. Found another one. So I could Invasion of Ergamon and then transform it with Render Inert to get any battle we want. And then I guess we'll discard Invasion of Tarkir. Okay. Hang on to the treasure. Or we can hang on to Abandoned Mire and just use the treasure here. Could have also tried to make our own 4-4 Dragon. This might have higher upside. Discard Copper Line Gorge. And then we've got a wealth of options here. Could go for Invasion of Innistrad once again. Could also go for Invasion of Fiora in case they top deck more creatures. Or Invasion of Chandelar, which could get a whole bunch of permanents back from the graveyard, including a Cemetery Desecrator. Yeah, let's give that a shot. And then I'll hang on to the land, I think. Although at this point, since we're going to use Invasion to get back our creatures, 
Probably don't need Abandoned Mire. Opponent passes. And yeah, can Invasion of Shondalar. And then still play Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So Desecrator can get Fable and maybe Invasion of Tarkir. Get the Fable going. And pass it back. Plenty of battles for us to pressure now with our Desecrator. Thunder Maw finishes off our Shaman. Okay, Voltage Surge is nice too. Do we want to discard anything? Pretty happy with my hand. Can use Invasion to make another treasure. So Voltage Surge can kill the Thunder Maw. If I Desecrate her, then I could get rid of a 3 mana card, not quite a 4 mana card, to transform our Invasion right away, but of course we get to attack as well. So maybe we'll start there. Go after Invasion of Chandelar. And then, yeah, Desecrate her. Again, leave creatures in their graveyard for the Deluge. That transforms. And now we've got our Leyline Surge, which will make it easier to empty our hand. And then, for now, good Ergamon, discard something, get a treasure, or we can just pass. Since I don't have anything I actively want to discard in hand. Opponent hangs back, and then we'll get our free Fable. The Invasion of Fiora, probably not going to be cast anytime soon. How about we attack the Invasion here, and then if they block we can finish off the Thunder Maw with the Invasion of Tarkir. And then hang on to the Voltage Surge as a future answer, as opposed to playing both on the Thunder Maw here. Opponent might have their own sweepers. And uh, yeah, we can maybe activate our Deluge end of turn to make some zombies. Another Into the Fire. That happens. Can make our Registaur indestructible potentially. Nope, opponent deciding to discard and draw instead. Makes sense. So end of turn. Start exiling their dragons. And then do we want to cast Invasion of Fiora? Sure. Destroy all legendary creatures. And then we can copy our Desecrator if we'd like. And then an all-out attack should do it here. Awesome. And then with our Desecrator dying, we can remove some more counters to transform Invasion of Tarkir as well. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hands not amazing, missing green for Invasion of Ixalan. So we might uh, miss a couple land drops here. This is better. And then what do we get rid of? Maybe Invasion of Fiora. And keep our ramp to get a Desecrator in play as soon as possible. Okay, our land will come into play tapped here. But we can still play turn 3 Fable. And uh, play with Fire going upstairs, so opponent's a pretty aggressive deck. Probably implies they have an answer for our Fable token. Opponents got their own battle, can discard and draw two. And if this transforms, they get the flame right. Okay. So 
So red white tech invasion number two. It's gonna take a look at our hands, kind of like the elite spellbinder to make a card more expensive. Goes for desecrator, no surprise. And another play with fire. Yep, takes care of our shaman. All right, I don't think we're keeping our invasion here. And then maybe Voltage Surge can go as well. And then we can cast our big score to try and get to our Desecrator anyways. So I might discard Proving Ground, keep the second big score. And if this one transforms, they get some sort of Anthem effect. Invasion of Ragatha can deal damage to battles. And the Invasion of Ragatha itself also quite nice. If it transforms, Disciples of the Inferno with Prowess getting to deal additional damage. So for now they get to Flame Rite from Invasion of Mercadia. So two distinctly different styles of battle decks going at it. Okay, Render Inert's great. Could transform my Invasion of Tarkir, although there's no great target for it at the moment. So I'm still tempted to try and big score again here. And then if our Reflection survives, we could copy the Desecrator after casting it. Invasion of Tarkir to answer Reflection makes sense. And our opponent looking to activate the Flame Rites to make a pair of 1-1s. One Alright, so they can finish off another battle here, potentially. Might as well big score first. And then now, do we keep Invasion or do we keep Render Inert? I think I keep the Invasion since at least we'll have a target for it now, and then we'll have a battle to actually transform with Desecrator. So that can put plus one counters on their creatures. So definitely a nice showcase of the red-white battles deck. So we can finally play Desecrator and then take out the Flame Rite if we'd like. That seems decent. Opponent could decide to sacrifice the Light Shield array to give Hexproof and Indestructible. Indestructible doesn't help against the Desecrator, but Hexproof sure does. Okay. Opponent can start going wide, but hopefully next turn we've got a 1 2 punch of Invasion and then try and take it out with Render Inert. Another Flame Rite activation. Yeah, these tokens are getting out of hand. I'm gonna hope they don't have a burn spell to finish off Desecrator and just block a 3-2. Let's see, so there's one going at uh, Invasion of Ragatha, and the rest going at Invasion of Tarkir. Yeah, seems like they're just gonna lose the 3-2 but manage to transform the battle. Another Desecrator's nice, could take out the Thunder Maw as well here. I left some big scores in the graveyard, so we could give minus four, minus four. And then do I attack or hang back? I guess we'll hang back for now. More tokens. Yeah, the Flame Rite's doing some good work. Could have also decided to take that out instead of the Dragon. Let's 
So now our opponent's got the uh, prowess creature that increases their damage output. Invasion of Dark here number two is nice. So now I can cast both of them to take out the Disciples, which may be slightly scarier here than the Flamerite still. Assuming there's no prowess trigger. Okay, so we're starting to turn the corner. And Invasion of Innistrad can take care of the Flamerite. So I feel okay attacking our battle here. Get another dragon. And Double Thunder Maw can now deal 4 damage as well if needed. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, we're definitely stabilizing here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. Can play a turn 2 Invasion of Ergamon, and then try and transform it turn 3 with Render Inert. Or we could try and get our dragon online. Not sure what I would even get with a Cliff Charger, maybe just a land once it transforms. I think I'm just gonna go upstairs with Invasion of Tarkir and then hope that a turn 3 dragon can carry us to victory. Okay, Ozolith, so opponent a green white plus one counter deck. So two damage from our dragon may not be enough to deal with our creatures. Could also hang on to render inert to maybe remove counters from the opponent's creatures. But let's get our dragon going here. And then next turn we can play Invasion to maybe dig for land. Siege Veteran, yeah, immediately grows up to a 4-4. Although Render Inert can finish it off here. That seems worth it. Remove two counters and then Thunder Maw can finish it off. No land drop for the turn. Is a bit concerning. So next turn we're looking at maybe Invasion, discarding Invasion of Fiora. Brawler enters as a 3-3 thanks to the Ozolith. And a Jada. That one we can take out with our Dragon at least. Yeah, turn 3, Thunder Maw doing work. Could also just play Fable instead of playing an invasion here. And then next turn we're pretty likely to hit our land drops. Yeah, I think I'm still going for invasion here. Alright, hit our land. Can play another one, or we can now play Fable if we'd like. Get that going. And then now we also have something expensive to maybe exile with our Cemetery Desecrator. Homestead Courage is quite nice. Two plus one counters thanks to the Ozolith. Hit for five. What do we discard? Maybe just both of these. And then we could render a nerd on the Brawler here to take it out. Let's see if that works. I guess they can still activate Ozolith, but only as a sorcery. So they might be holding something else. Who knows? Could be a protection spell. Nope, that worked. Okay. And then let's just go face at this point. And then I could render a nerd on the invasion. Also have the flexibility of removing counters from Fable of the Mirror Breaker. But this seems more fun. Okay, my hand's pretty stacked. Could still discard a tap land to get an untapped land. 
So we don't have to worry about that. And maybe even get Boseju, which could also answer the Ozolith. Bonus at two, so they'll need some sort of board wipe. GG's. Yeah, that was impressive. Turn three, Thundermaw gets the job done. Alright, so we got to see our Jun's Battles deck in action, and I was quite impressed with how it performed here. Of course, we're playing this in the Early Access event, as opposed to the Ranked Ladder, so we're not up against the decks like Monorad's Aggro or Blue-Eyed Soldiers, which can be quite punishing for these newer strategies that tend to be a bit slow. That being said, we still have lots of cheap removal for those decks between Voltage Surge, Invasion of Tarkir, and then getting to play a turn 3 Thunder Moth thanks to Render Inert can also be quite solid against those strategies. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.